and I'm going to go on air and I'm going to take us back to 1985 and this is a film called Dogs in Space I don't know whether anybody has ever heard of this but it's one of my favourite films it's an Australian film now I did an Australian film yesterday so I'm going to continue in that theme just for uh, today. Uh, an Australian film set in Melbourne in 1978, around the time of what was known as the little band scene. Now, the little band scene was a very obscure phenomenon, which only lasted about three years and focused on experimental music with a post-punk leaning. And being experimental, it involved a lot of artists with a total lack of any musical skill or knowledge, but also quite a few with quite a lot. So, you know, um, the bands were usually short-lived and often interchanged their members and equipment. Uh, <clears throat> and the punk ethos, that kind of ensured a intentional disposability in their work and presentation. The, the, the ethos was basically to rebel against um, the packaged commercial world by being the opposite. Uh, many of the bands were artists, uh, painters, poets, or filmmakers rather than musicians. So there was a lot of Dada influence in the whole scene. Now this scene actually did exist um, in Melbourne and the acts were usually recorded on a TIAC reel-to-reel -reel and rebroadcast on three triple R radio station which I remember recording a show for at school in 1977. I, uh, one, of, some of, one of my teachers, some of my teachers, um, got me a, a single show on that radio station and they provided me with reel-to-reel -reel equipment and everything and record decks. And I did a, rec I did a show on craft work, actually. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, um, it was a highly influential scene, the whole um, 3 triple R little band scene. Very, very Im important. Um, this fictional film, however, let's go back to the film. The fictional film here is set in a house share. It's semi-fictional, actually. Set in a house share in a city suburb of Melbourne called Richmond. Sam, played by Michael Hutchins. You may have heard of Michael Hutchins. Um, he's in a band. Sam is in a band and shares a house with a bandmate and his girlfriend, Anna, and a few other random misfits. And these characters and the band that they associate with are not really part of the Melbourne little band scene that I've just described. So they're not, they're not really little band um, type of characters, but they are perhaps typical of the sort of audience that would turn up to see such art events, or at least they would, have, they would be aware of the scene even though they're not quite part of it. They're sort of on the fringe of it. Um, the film is mostly the misadventures of the characters, parties, relationships of, of these people. Um, Concurrently, at the same time, there is the impending crashing to Earth of the remnant of Skylab, which at the time was due to burn out over Australia at the time. And the film was directed uh, uh, and written by Richard Lowenstein, or Lowenstein, I don't know, and, and was based on his own experiences living in a similar shared house situation in Melbourne in the late 1970s. Now, Lowenstein had previously made promo film clips for In Excess, so he wrote the lead part specifically for Michael Hutchins. Now, for the film, they rented the exact house that Lowenstein and his friends had lived in, 18 Berry Street in Richmond. The house had new owners by then, and <laughs> they modified the house at quite large expense from the film's budget. The budget was quite large for a film that looks like it was shot in a derelict street. Two million dollars, two million Australian dollars. I don't, I don't know how much two million Australian dollars was, would be worth at the time. I think those were the days when an Australian dollar was actually worth something. Now it was quite, also quite innovative. Uh, it made use of the first, um, first use in Australia certainly of a double crane system for straight line vertical camera movements. And there's lots of really good, uh, and it's shot in widescreen, it's, there's a lot of really good camera work involved in this film for such, for something that seems like a low budget film. It's actually deceptively good. Uh, from a production point of view. There isn't really a plot or story arc to the film at all. It's simply a set of things that happen and people it happens to, but with no particular build-up of tension or resolution or progress or anything like that, except at the end. Now, it didn't really make the money back initially for a few reasons. Firstly, it was given an R rating by the censors, restricting it to 18 or over, and that really did restrict the audience, uh, but mainly because of the drug use in the film, even though the death through heroin overdose of Anna, Sam's girlfriend, at the end, or toward the end, is treated as a moral pivot. 
uh, changing everything about the previously carefree casual group. So it wasn't um, glorifying drugs. The second reason is that the, the film was up against another Australian film at the same time, Crocodile Dundee. And you know which one won. <laughs> and in 2009 for the DVD release, it was classified with a much easier rating. The music is a highlight of this film, especially if you're into obscure Australian post-punk. But there's more to the soundtrack than just that. For example, Iggy Pop, Gang of Four, Brian Eno, uh, played very often on a record player throughout the film. <laughs> Boys Next Door, who would later change their name to The Birthday Party. Uh, birthday Party... Um, were also part of this little band scene that I described earlier. It's quite an important film in many ways, but it's not an easy film to like. I like it, but that's because I was there at the time. I wasn't living that kind of lifestyle, but I was just following that music scene. But in the in the in the years in in recent years, it's been recognised as a very important film. Dogs in Space, 1985. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>